Sunday morning, everyone. Here is the latest from the National Hurricane Center as of the 11 a.m. advisory. Hurricane Dorian now with maximum sustained winds of 180 miles per hour, moving west at seven miles per hour. So it's going to continue to slow down, and this is going to be just a catastrophic event for the Bahamas. It's going to bring life threatening storm surge, wind, and flooding to some of the islands of the Bahamas. It is also, according to the National Hurricane Center, the strongest hurricane to ever reach the Northeast. Bahamas or go through the Northeast Bahamas. So let's talk about the latest cone from the National Hurricane Center, what it has to say. So there are tropical storm warnings, watches and hurricane watches and warnings along parts of the eastern coast of Florida here as they wait for this storm to get closer in the coming days. There's still some uncertainty. Obviously, that's why we use this cone. So the storm has been kind of wobbling back and forth over the past couple advisories. So there still is the potential that this storm comes very close, if not along the Florida coastline. Right now, the consensus is that it stays off the coast, but again, the potential is there. So it'll stay at category three status as it goes up the peninsula of Florida and eventually weakening to a category two status as it goes past the coast of South Carolina. All of central Georgia, this is what's for us, is now out of the cone of uncertainty, but that doesn't mean that this storm can't shift all the way to the west of this cone and come very close to us. But again, that is looking increasingly unlikely and it looks like we will get minimal impacts from Dorian as of now. Of course, that could change. You can see here with some of the spaghetti models. Some want to say that it goes up the coast just along the coast. But again, the majority, the consensus of most of the models keeps it off the coast of the United States, the eastern coast of the United States. So we're going to be watching this very carefully. We're not putting our guard down just yet, and we're going to continue to watch to see how the models trend as we go through the coming days. So probability of winds over 40 miles per hour. Wind is going to be our largest threat as this system potentially parallels the coast here. So we could see wind gusts upwards of 40 miles per hour in some of our eastern counties. That threat is low, but it's still possible. This is the GFS model, so I'll show you what I mean. As we get into Tuesday evening, we can already start to see some wind gusts come on through. And Wednesday morning, expect wind gusts anywhere from 15 to about 25 miles per hour. The more east of Macon you live, the higher wind gusts you could potentially see because you will be closer to the center of the storm. So wind gusts in places like Vidalia as we get into Wednesday afternoon could gust upwards of 40 miles per hour. Again, east of Macon, you are going to experience higher gusts as this storm parallels the coast. Area wide, we're talking 15 to 25 miles per hour, higher gusts the more east of Macon you go. We will be on the west side of this storm, so that is the clean side of the storm. That means wind is the main threat, rain not so much. We'll really only pick up maybe between a tenth of an inch to maybe a half an inch of rain the more east you go. The bigger issue when it comes to rain is going to be along the coast. So we will be sure to keep you updated on air and online. But again, it is becoming increasingly likely that we'll see minimal impacts from Dorian, but we're not putting our guard down just yet.